So we're changing tack a little bit now because we've had something really, really special happen at Gold Coast Christian College in just the last couple of weeks. We have a program at school called F1 in Schools and it's a science, technology, engineering and maths challenge. It's the biggest challenge in the world for STEM. And I believe there are 26,000 schools that participate around the world, like is huge, absolutely massive. And our school has a bit of a history now of being successful in F1. This year in, I think it was June, our top team, the professional team, they came fourth in the world, which is absolutely astounding. Yes. But you've got to start somewhere. And starting in F1... This year has been a bunch of Year 7s. I would like to invite all the Year 7s who went to Mackay for the F1 in Schools State Championships to come up, please. Yes, that's you, Jesse, and Kyle and Ari and Jacob and Matthew and Ryan. And is there anyone else here? Okay. Michael's not here today? No. Okay, so we've got a little video that we're just going to show you a snapshot of what F1 in schools is all about. So guys, if you want to turn around, you can see it too. Okay, so how this works is there are three different levels. Now, in cadet class, can you guys stand in your teams for me, please? So Kyle, Jacob and Matthew were stellar racing. We also had another cadet class. And that's like the very beginning stages. And they have to create a poster, or two posters actually, that show their engineering process. They also have to create their miniature little car that is machined out of balsa wood. And then they have to decorate it and race it. So these guys got best poster, but they are also state champions. They won the competition <laughs> and are the 2021 state champions for the cadet class, which was an amazing effort. So we went to Mackay, 13 hours on a bus each way. It was awesome, I have to say. It was so much fun. And um, the boys did incredibly well. Then we had development class. Now, development is the next level up. Now, you not only have to produce your car to engineering specifications. Oh, by the way, did you see the car that weighed in at the perfect weight at 52.09 grams? The car could not be under 52 grams. That was Kyle's engineering that did that. 
And we were sweating as to whether it was going to be underweight because if it's underweight, they add screws and that's not nice for your car. So that was awesome for him. Cadet class have different regulations for development class. So development, the cars can be slightly lighter and they have to be a minimum of 50 grams. Now, we had two teams in, in development. We had Gambit Racing, which was Jesse and Ryan's team, and we had Herd Racing, which is intentionally spelt with a capital H and E and R in the middle of Herd because it was an all-girls team who said, we will be Herd. And Herd indeed they were. But Gambit Racing, Jesse, would you mind telling us as engineer, both of you were engineers, when did you finish your car? The day we got there. No, no. No, no, no. That's actually not correct. When did you finish the car? At the venue. Right, thank you. So they are out the front of the venue waiting to go in to be scrutineered and their team is out there with saws and glue and... Uh. Anyway, it was a miracle that they even had anything to race because they had quite a few setbacks along the way. But not only did they have something to race, they got the judges, the Chair of Judges Recognition Award. That's only given to one team in all the competition and that's for the judges recognising something special about these guys' team. Now, what they did, I think they wowed the judges in their verbal presentation because you have to do a 10-minute verbal presentation, you have trade interviews at your booth, you have manufacturing and engineering interviews where you go in and talk to real engineers and they ask you questions, and then you also have the racing element. These guys were putting the final touches on their team presentation, I would say, 20 seconds before they went in. But in the final 20 seconds, do you know what they did? without any teacher or adult input, they gathered in a circle and they prayed. And this team in the middle of an auditorium prayed that God would be with them and that all the work would, would be a blessing. And they came out of that going, the judges loved us. <laughs> and they walked away with this amazing award. So big congratulations to Gambit Racing. <laughs> and then we had our superstar all-girl team. Now, details were these girls' specialty. Did you see their display? Like it was just gorgeous in the uniforms and they ticked a lot of boxes. These girls were competitive in every single element. Now, Ari, we had a tough day, didn't we, to start off with? They scrutiny your cars, they measure them, they weigh them and you lose points. And even though we thought we'd been following the guidelines pretty closely, it was still really tough. Ari was our engineer for the girls' team and she did an amazing job but just found it a bit confronting to kind of get the report, yeah, that kind of goes, this is all the things that are wrong with your car and you're actually given an opportunity to fix it. So you go into a room, no adults allowed in there and you have to decide how you're going to fix your car. Now, Ari was amazing because she had to come off the disappointment. She was disappointed with her car, even though it actually was really good. She was still disappointed. And then she had to go straight into an engineering interview. So that was pretty full on and something she, I don't think she'll ever forget. But at the end of all of that, on the final day of presentations, Herd Racing got best verbal presentation. And they not only did that... They also got second overall. Now, the amazing thing was there were two other teams who just swept the pool of all the other awards because there's heaps of awards they give out. These girls got one award, just one. But they came second because they placed first, second or third in every category. And not only that, the biggest news of all, Herd Racing are a wild card entry to the national finals in Melbourne in April next year. which means they've got a lot of work ahead of them. And if there's anyone who has a business or would like to sponsor these girls, um, that's actually part of what they need to do is drum up sponsorship. So please come and see me or Ari or Pastor Mike or any of the other adults, you know, who work at the school if you would like to sponsor our teams. Okay, thank you, F1. Yeah, let's give them another clap. So now I'm going to switch my hat and put my writer hat on. Who's got their hands on one of these? Yay! I'm so excited. So this is my latest book, co-authored with Nathan Brown. And it's 
based on Nathan's book last year, Advent. Who read this book? Did anyone read this one? It was a beautiful, beautiful book. And earlier this year, right at the start of the year, Science Publishing rang me and asked if they could commission me to write from Advent, an Advent for Kids. And it's a companion volume. So it goes along with Advent for Kids. Now, being a writer, not many times do you have someone come and ask you to write something. Normally, you're trying to make business happen. And so that was just amazing for a start. And then to be able to write something for kids and for families, it's designed to be used in families however you want to use it, whether it's family worship, whether it's a bedtime story, whether it's in the car on the way to school, up to you how you use it. There's different elements to every day. There's questions, activities, ideas, um, craft, things you can download, all kinds of things. But you can make it as little or as big as you want it to be as part of your Christmas journey. But what's been most amazing about this for me is that other people have taken this book and they've created things that I hadn't even thought of. So we have out the back an Advent calendar for Advent for Kids that you can tick off something for every day in the month of December, just like the ones where you open the windows. This one's got a little checkbox and there's a QR code down the bottom. And if you scan that, that will take you to the Road to Bethlehem website and you can sign up to get free emails in your inbox every day with songs or videos to go along with it or little craft activities to do or a drama to watch. And so it's just been amazing for me to see this little book be embraced by so many different people around Australia and they're turning it into something bigger than I ever thought it would be. Now, just a disclaimer, I was commissioned to write this, which means that there's no royalties for me in this, okay? I just want to make that really clear that I get no financial benefit from, from promoting this. Our church saw the value in this for our families and they went ahead and bought copies from Science Publishing to give to you. And the only thing that they ask is that if you take one of these, that you use it. So I might get Mike to come up and just share a little bit about that process. Yeah, so as we said last week, you know, we're, we're um, privileged to have Karen, the author of this book, which is going right around Australia and New Zealand. And um, last week I said I put like a, a, a $10 price tag on it. And I guess today I'm going to say, if you paid $10 last week, if you want a refund, we'll give it to you. Because today we've decided we want to just give them to you. Now, if you want to give a donation towards helping the cost of the books, we, we welcome that. And uh, the, if you buy them at the ABC, they're 20 bucks. We were offering them for 10 But we just want you to have them. Um, the Advent calendar is a great thing, you know, to go through with your family. And each day just tick, do the reading. Kids love having that as you lead up to um, each day through the month of December. So um, as, as a gift to you, we'd love for you to have these books, but we really want you to start this week. December the 1st is Wednesday. Wednesday. So it would be great to see a lot of our families kicking off. I know our family's going to make an effort. I know it's a challenge to find that time, but we're going to work on it, and we challenge you too to go through this book, and uh, we'd like for you to have it. So grab a copy on your way out. Uh, someone will be there if you want to give a donation, but don't feel like you have to. We want you to have it. We want it to go out. Okay, and get an advent calendar as well. And I'm more, ha more than happy to sign copies if anyone likes getting signed copies of, of books. I know I do, so just saying more than happy to do that. I'll be out the front too. Thanks, Karen. We, we love being a, a church that's, I guess, socially inclusive as we are focusing on that today in our theme of stride and being socially inclusive. You know, whether you're old or young, we hope you feel welcomed and loved here. And whether you're from Australia or some other country, multicultural is something we pride ourselves, having people from all over. Even from different states within Australia, you're welcome here, right? That's, uh, so those borders are pretty tough these days. But one of the challenges I guess we have is just to keep this facility um, able to be... Um, operating each week and it relies on lots of volunteers and I thank all the people that do so many things each week but as Lockie has shared with you the last few weeks we've had a challenge with one of our hires who have uh, exited the, our building and left uh, or taken with them a lot of our gear and so at the business meeting um, on Monday night it was voted that we're going to spend a, a, a large sum of money um, I'm, I'm hesitant to even say it because you're probably what 
But it is a lot. But this stuff doesn't come cheap. And what we want to do is equip this church for the future. We don't want to get down the line a few years down and think, oh, we should have gotten some better quality or this isn't good enough for what we are now. So we, we actually approved to spend $140,000 on our lighting and sound and new desk and, and new speakers are going to go up here. Sometimes you might find, last week uh, I said something earlier on, it was, it, it was a bit loud last week, it was piercing. These speakers were made um, and designed 12 years ago when basically all we had was a piano and an organ. Okay, it wasn't for a band. So what we want to do is get a sound so it's, it's, everyone will enjoy it more because it won't be so piercing. It'll be a sound that's smoother and easier on the ears. So with that comes a cost, and so we continue to fundraise for that. I think Lockie's doing some stuff. If you're interested in maybe in, in, in um, buying a microphone, we've got to buy eight microphones, or maybe if you can't afford that, you might want to just buy some cabling. And There's lots of different things. We've got a huge list of stuff that has to be replaced, and so we're working towards that. And thanks already for many who have been very generous. We've already got fifty-two thousand dollars of that money raised, so we're, we're on um, a good direction to do that. So thank you for your generosity. And today's offering is for um, our local church, and um, you know you can give. When the buckets come around, of course you can do e-giving on our app or online. You can uh, arrange, um, you know, something that automatically gives each week. You pay your tithe. Again, tithe is something that, you know, God asks us to give 10%. That doesn't go anything to our local church. This goes to support um, our work around the world and supplying ministers to churches. Uh, but also there's our church offering, which you contribute to, which will help us as we run our ministries here in this church. And also a portion of that will go towards our building project, which uh, we're still hoping maybe in February. At this point, it's looking like we might see ground being broken to having the much-needed family ministries extension so we can house all the children we have. So um, I invite those to come forward and get ready to take up the offering, and I'd love to say a prayer before we do. Let's bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this church. Lord, we're all just um, human beings, and because we're humans, we're born sinners. We're, we're not worthy, but Lord, you sent Jesus to come and to save us all, and, and we thank you for that wonderful gift. And really, that's why we're here, because we just want to worship you and praise you as our creator, God. But not only are you our creator, but our savior. And Lord, um, everything belongs to you, and we just thank you for the opportunity we have to give back to you, to give back to you a portion of what you blessed us. So we just ask that you will bless the offerings that are given today. May it go to um, bring you glory and ultimately to further your kingdom. And uh, we look forward to your coming back the second time and taking us home with you. Lord, I also want to just pray for those in our church that are hurting. Lord, I know that this past week, um, people have passed away. People have lost loved ones. We had a funeral here in the church, and I've had other people share with me today that they've lost people who are close to them, to this enemy of death. And I just pray you'll comfort them. We thank you that you conquered death, and uh, we just pray you'll be with them in a special way. There's others that are suffering from sickness and illness, and I just lift them up to you as well. Um, I just pray for um, Meryl and uh, Rennell's mother, who's very ill, and uh, she might not live much longer, and we just pray that she'll rest in, uh, in your arms as she uh, takes her final days here on this earth. And Lord... Um, we also lift up James to you. James, who now has been being treated for leukemia for a couple of weeks. He's losing his hair. His muscles in his calves are nodding up like tennis balls. He's in pain. And, Lord, he's asking why. And, Lord, I just pray, Lord, we don't understand why sometimes. But there's one thing that we do know that we don't have to ask why. And that is, for why do you save everyone? Because you love us. And we just pray for James and Ivy, for his stepdad Paul, as they support him. We pray for the doctors and nurses looking after him at this time. Lord, I know there's others that are suffering, and uh, there's so much suffering in this world from aches and pains, and some are in hospital, some have relatives and friends that maybe are in other places, and we just lift them up to you. We thank you that you're the healing God as well, and may you provide healing, both physical physical, spiritual, 
and mental healing. So we just commit all these things in your hands, and uh, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hello, my name is Bridget Gunn. I've been a part of this community here since 1996. The community's been on the Gold Coast since 1926 when they gathered in people's homes and they didn't actually have a church until 1950 and that's when they moved into the premises in Southport. By 2001 there was a lot of development going on in the community so we decided to take a leap of faith and sell our church, look for another site and build a bigger premises and make it a community-based church. So you can imagine the joy in 2009 when we finally moved in here and we realised that we needed to make this new place a house of prayer. So based on Isaiah 56, 7, we decided to have a weekly prayer group meet and faithfully pray that God would send young families and children. And after 12 months, something miraculous happened. But we got a new pastor who had a heart for youth. And he started a Pathfinder Club. Oh, hundreds of kids came and they also bought their parents. And then at Sabbath School was totally revamped, totally turned upside down to be new and exciting. And a lot more kids came and their parents came to drop them off. When we revamped our foyer and started guest services, it was the beginning of a culture change in our church because all the parents who had otherwise been waiting out in the car park, they stayed and we eventually set up Parents Connect so that they could have a drink and sit around and talk. The other thing we've done is we've tried to engage with the young adults and the youth and to mentor them into positions of responsibility. And what I find most heartening is now to see those very young adults actually mentoring younger children. 2021, we have over 200 children between the ages of 4 and 18 in our community. I believe that the key has been the faithful prayer warriors who each week have prayed that God would send young families and children. This is a truly uh, intergenerational church with the wisdom of the older folk and the joy and exuberance of the young ones. It's amazing what he's done here. I can't imagine being at any other church. When we moved in here and called this place a life development centre, the thought behind that was that it would be a place where people could find meaning and purpose in life, where they could get to know God and then eventually make a difference by way of service themselves. And that is our vision now. We want to draw the people of the Gold Coast to Jesus. Okay, if you haven't guessed, it's time for the children's story and you can come to the front with me. Yay! Okay, how exciting. We have balloons. <laughs> it's so good. Who likes balloons? Who doesn't like balloons? Uh, only when they don't, when they pop. Yes, I get that. They give you a fright. But don't they look lovely together? There's all different colours. Yeah, you guys look lovely today too. Mm -hmm. Do you want to stand up and have a look at the church? And I want you to have a little look out there. Look at the different people that are out there. Aren't they looking lovely today? You gotta say, you look lovely. Come on, you look lovely. <laughs> okay, uh, that was a lot of enthusiasm. Do you wanna sit down? Thank you for helping me with that. 
but I think they look pretty good today. I'm looking around and I'm seeing lots of different types of people. I see younger people, I see older people, I see people that are smiling, people that aren't smiling and very serious. But they look pretty good. If we didn't have those people, would we have our church? No, we wouldn't. Okay, so today I have a new word for you. Do you want a new word? Yeah. Build your vocab, that's right. Okay, ready? This one's a good one. It's haughty. Can you say haughty? Are you haughty? You are. Do you know what you're saying that you're haughty about? Mm. Okay, we'll see. So I have these beautiful balloons. They all look lovely. And I'm going to get Amy and um, Jessie and my friend Rochelle to help give you a balloon. Okay? You ha- I'm really, really concerned. And I'm going to say sorry to Pastor Mike before we start because we might have a couple of floaters. <laughs> we'll see how we go. Okay? Can I? Okay, some of the older children might come around and help you, or young adults, Amy. Amy, Amy. Okay. Do you like your colour? I I hope you do. Okay, I want you to stand up if you've got a balloon. And even if you don't have a balloon, you can stand up too. And what I'm going to get you to do is if you like going and playing on the play equipment at school, you get to go over here. So if you like playing on the play equipment, everyone go, go, go. If you like to play on the play equipment, no one. Okay, if you like handball, you get to come on this side. So if you like handball, come over this way. Okay, Um If you just like hanging out with your friends, you can go to the middle, okay? Um, Oh, we've got some movement happening. Okay, what about if you like to go and play on the oval? So, uh, let's go, yeah, let's go back over here for the oval because we've had a whole stack of people move. Okay, I think we're doing all right. So, let's be nice and still, keep your balloons still. We've still got a bit of a mix of colour, don't we? Oh, we've got all the pink balloons over here. Now, Hannah just realised that she doesn't really like hanging out with her friends at lunchtime anymore. And so she's going to go over towards the pink balloons because they're a little bit more like her and she's just going to gravitate that way. And Jazzy's going to do the same, Okay. And, and then we're going to have our little friend with the blue balloon. Can I get you to come over here? Can, can walk this way. And you're going to come and play with the big boys. Okay? And then, oh, you guys, yep, all the green ones come together. You look all look very similar, don't you? Yeah, everything's doing well. Oh, there we go. We've got another. Oh, you've got another person. Yay. Can you see what's happened? Everyone's just gone to wherever the colour is. Okay, you're all the same in the same places. 
Is it as pretty as when all the balloons were together? I don't think so. But then we have the odd balloon. We've got Jessie. Come on, Jessie. You're the odd balloon. Yes, you're going to come to the centre. He is totally different to everybody. Stand up. He's 12 and he's looking like this. He has a size 13 shoe and he's 12. He's very weird. And um, he's a little bit hard to cater for at the moment. Yeah, I asked him if I could say this. So it's, apparently it's okay. Okay, so everyone's sort of staying away from this big 12-year-old because he's a bit different. Okay, oh, nice. We've got someone that said they're going to come towards you. Stand up, you've got to stand up. Okay, who would like to spend time with Jesse? Oh, yay. Do you want to come in? Come and be with Jesse, nice and close. Yeah? Oh, we've still got some people that are choosing not to be. Is it getting prettier? We've got all the purple balloons. Can we put the balloons up if you're with Jesse? Okay, if you want to come and play at Jesse's, what, what can you play that's really cool? Oh, he's got a swimming pool. Who likes to come and have a swim in Jesse's swimming pool? Oh, okay, we've got a few more people. Did you invite people, Jesse? Did you invite people to swim in your swimming pool? Yes, he did. Okay, all the balloons are coming together. And then, what do you like doing? Oh, Jesse loves AFL. Do you want to come and join him? Yeah, come and join him. What do you like doing, Trey? Oh, he wants to play on the playground. Do you think all of you could play on the playground with Trey? Yeah, come on, Trey. Let's go play on the playground. What do you like doing? Singing. Jesse's a good singer. Do you want to come sing with Jesse? Yeah, come on. Come join him. Ah, look what's happening. It's looking better again. Okay. Do you want to sit down now for a little while? I know it's really hard to concentrate when you've got a balloon. Do you want to sit down? Okay, everyone's sitting down. Okay, I gave you a word at the beginning. What was that word? Haughty. Haughty. Do you know what it means? It means being proud or snobby. Okay, did you see what sort of happened? Because Jesse was a little bit different, everyone sort of stayed away for a little while. And it took a little while for us to decide that we wanted to spend time with him. Okay? So, it actually talks about that in the Bible, not to be haughty. <laughs> Did you know that? It actually has that word. Okay, ready? Romans twelve sixteen. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty. Um, never be wise in your own sight. So, my challenge to you is not to be haughty and to make sure that you include everyone in your play. So I want you to be looking for people that are a little bit different and might not have friends to play with, okay? And not be haughty. <laughs> okay, you can go back to your seats and if you don't have a balloon, you can come and get, you get to have two things that make us different and the things that we have in common. We have in common that we are part of the body of Christ. I was just reading earlier the verses in Revelation chapter 4 about around the throne there are four beasts and they're all so different and there's the 24 elders and they all, they come together and they all 
worship before the Lord God Most High, singing holy, holy, holy. The things that bring us together, even though we're so different, is that we have the same Saviour and we have the same King. So I invite you to stand with us as we sing.
worship your son, the infinite price that was paid for our redemption, we acknowledge, we honour you, and we seek your help right now so that through your spirit you would speak to us. Not only fill our heads with information, but transform our hearts. Change us, Father God, so that your name may be glorified. We pray in Jesus' name. Thank you, Caroline and, and worship team. As Pastor Mike shared, we're continuing our series about stride. And we're talking about socially inclusive. And what a great illustration from Andrew and Jesse. And as I watch these balloons, what a great illustration is still sitting on our roof. You can see I've had three balloons think that each other is pretty good. And we've got one balloon out in the middle here. It's all by itself. I don't know how you're feeling today. You might be like this one balloon. That's all by itself. Or you could be like these three that are having a good time together. One's just started to move a bit away now, so something happened there. There's a fight going on. (laughs) But we are here today as one. We are one body one church. Each of us is different. Each of us has different gifts and abilities. Each of us interacts differently, speaks differently. But the amazing thing about this church that is the object of Christ's supreme regard is that even though we're imperfect, even though we are not normal in our own eyes, God takes each one of us And says, you know what? You would make a great church community. And puts us together. As you know, I go for Richmond. And my boys go for Richmond. We go for the Tigers. And last year, we had the wonderful opportunity, thanks to COVID, to go to the grand final. Jad and I experienced... All the thrills and excitement of the grand final. This is just before the actual game starts. We're watching the players gather around. It was raining before the game started, but it dried up as well. And there we are cheering the Tigers on, having a wow of a time. And then we finally win the premiership. And I remember praying at halftime because we were down by 30-odd points. And I prayed, God, if you can help me, just help us win. Because I didn't want to take a disappointed boy home for an hour-long drive back to the Gold Coast. And Richmond came back, and we won the premiership. But there was something about this experience. You see, we were seated in this packed Gabba Stadium. Yet the guy beside me, who I have no idea who he was just struck up this conversation about my implants. So you've got cochlear implants? I said, yeah, I've got cochlear implants. Tell me about them. I said, what do you want to know about them? He said, everything. My daughter has just got cochlear implants now. So tell us all about it. Have they changed your life? And so here we are watching this grand final. I'm talking to this guy about my cochlear implants. The guy in front of us is a very happy sort of guy. And I think after about six beers, he became even happier. <laughs> and all around us, we're tuning this game on, all heading in the same direction, all watching for the same result as we're going for the Tigers. And every time Dustin Martin grabs the ball, everyone is up on their feet to see what he's going to do. At the end, we won the premiership. It didn't matter about masks. It didn't matter about COVID. It didn't matter about 1.5 minutes social distancing. The guy in front of us that was very happy, he gave me the biggest bear hug I've ever experienced (laughs) because we were one. And I'm like, afterwards, I smell like alcohol. And Jade and I were just mobbed in this pack of exuberant celebration. 
because our team had won, we'd be going in the same direction, and didn't matter what color their skin was, didn't matter where they came from, didn't matter who they were, we were one, we were happy, and we were celebrating together. Strive. Are we, are you, socially inclusive? Do we stride to be socially inclusive in our life and in this church? Because I'll ask you this question. Why do we tend to put people in boxes? We tend to put people in a box and we close the lid and we've got that person all sorted out. They're very close. Oh, This is a very inclusive church, isn't it? That's quite fascinating. I feel sorry for this one still, but hopefully you get to come across eventually. But we put people in a box and we want to put the lid on. And if we've got people in a box and we put the lid on, we can keep people there and we put people in the box and we stereotype them. It depends what they might look like. Smell like, be like, whatever we want, we'll put people in a box and they stay there. And we struggle day after day to take people out of those boxes. In actual fact, our world continues to struggle to take people out of boxes because we put them there. You'll see the various protests happening even now because we struggle as a community to take people out of boxes when we're all very quick to put them in. I need four volunteers. Kieran, Alexander, Jesse. Do you want it, Jason? Yeah, come on up, mate. Come on up. Come on up, come up on stage. And I might go over this area here. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to get your fingers out. Those fingers need to stay in a circle. So you need to come here. Yep, come around, come around, come around. Come in here, Alexander. Get the fingers out. And what I want to do, I want you to put this rubber band over there and put it over the next finger. If you want to come in close, you can come in closer. Want to come in closer, come in closer. Oh, sorry, mate. Okay, what we have here right now is each of these men, will I say, are joined together by the rubber band. And it's an illustration of church where we're bound together. We're a part of the family of God. And if God is in the center, let's say God is in the center, the less tension on those rubber bands, the closer you are to God. But if I say, Kieran, you haven't been vaccinated, take a step back. If I say to Jason, because you've got tattoos, I don't like the look of you, take a step back. If I say, Jesse, because you're too young, take a step back. Alexander, because you're so small, I don't think you belong in this circle. Take a step back. If I say to Kieran, because you had a fight with me, and I haven't resolved it, take a step back. Alexander, because you bullied me at school, take a step back. Oh, that's a very little step, young man. (laughs) I'm glad you've got small steps. Jason, because you looked at me and you thought that I was perfect, 
and I have it all together, I have a good relationship with God, yet I don't. Take a step back. Jesse. There's tension going on here. Jesse. Because I have a disability and you judged me because I can't hear properly, take a step back. No, a bigger step than that, Jesse. <laughs> Here we go. I was about to end that one. But it snapped. Or flung off, did it? I don't know. It's gone somewhere. Thanks, guys. Thanks for being a part of it. As you can see, as I raised a number of different issues, you could see the rubber band getting further and further. There was more tension as it went. And the thing is, when the rubber band snaps, it hurts. Church, right now, we're living in a world where those rubber bands are out of tension. And we're living in a world where there is an answer. Where Christ has given the world an answer. And that is you. That is me. That is the church. In the Bible, we find the story in John 8. Of the woman caught in adultery, right here was a great example of the people of the church, of the Pharisees, of the people that thought they knew everything about the book and the Bible and the Old Testament, New Testament. You name it, they knew everything about Jesus Christ. And they found this woman caught in adultery. And they drag her out and they throw her at Jesus' feet. Jesus, what are you going to do about this one? And Jesus stands there. He looks at the woman. He sees the Pharisees with their stones in the hand, ready to stone, because that was supposed to happen. Stone her. And he says, He who is without sin cast the first stone. And the story is told that he knelt down, writing all the sins of all the accusers. In that dirt. Woman, go sin no more. What did he say? You are a part of the kingdom of God, no matter, no matter how hard your life has been. And today we say to you as a church, this may be your first time. Welcome home. You belong here. You're a part of the family of God. Over in Mark, we find another illustration. Mark 1, verse And in this instance, a leper comes to Jesus. And kneeling down, he says, if you are willing, can you make me clean? Why do I say this? Because lepers in the old times, in these times, they were the outcasts. If you were caught to be a leper, you may have been thought of maybe today being the unvaccinated. And you were hey, you can't come here. You're not good enough to be near me. And here is this leper who comes to Jesus automatically with this instance of coming to Jesus. He has made Jesus unclean. 
And so right here, right now, you have two people that are unclean. They're the outcasts of society. But Jesus says here, he was moved with compassion, stretched out his hand and touched him and said to him, I am willing, be cleansed. As soon as he had spoken, immediately leprosy left him and he was cleansed. And then he says, hey, don't go and tell this anywhere else. But when you have been touched by Jesus Christ, you can't help but share what he has done for you. And this man runs and he shares with everyone what Jesus has just done. You see, Jesus doesn't look the outward appearance. Jesus doesn't care what has happened in your life. What he cares about is your heart. He loves you with an everlasting love. Desmond walked into church. And I was preaching this day, and I looked down the back, and he was sitting down the back, right the very back of church. As church finished, people made a detour around him to go out. And as I went up and sat next to him, I said, Desmond, what brings you here today? I've just got out of jail. I'm on my way home. As I'm on my way home, I saw the sign for church, and so I came in. Welcome home. Welcome home. We went through AdSafe and had a safety agreement in place for Desmond. So he could feel like he was a part of this family, this journey together with him. To Jesus, Desmond's heart meant everything to him. Everything to him. And we were able to help him with food, with clothes, and support him getting his life back on track. You see, Jesus goes on in Luke. And he says, but when you give a feast, and he talks about giving feasts and talks about wedding banquets here in this passage. When you give a feast, invite the poor, the maimed and the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you, for you shall be repaid at the resurrection of the just. Talk about haughty. Talk about snob. Here is Jesus heading straight down that line saying, hey, get over yourselves and get me. Because when you have Jesus in your life, you can't help but be inclusive. You can't help but be a socially inclusive community like we're seeing up there at the moment and like we're not seeing there at the moment. Jesus wants us to stand up in the world today and to be a part of that family of God and model to a broken, stretched, hurting world what it means to be a church community that lives as the body united under Jesus Christ. In my ministry, I've experienced this in many different ways. And this is a picture of Broad Meadows. And here we used to do a Sunday morning barbecue. And you know what? It didn't matter who came. They're a part of our community. We have people with bringing beers, people bringing slabs of meat, people coming as they are because we wanted to love them and love them to experience the amazing Jesus Christ that we know. Another example is when I was in New Zealand, we set up a burger van that would head out to the streets and would share burgers with the community. That's Ready Burger, by the way. It's not meat. They would make Ready Burger patties and head out to the community. 
And the very first person came along, it was raining that night. She was baptized in the body of Christ. That was one person on that first night. But that ministry grew from one to 300 people coming out on a Friday evening to experience burgers, to experience some basketball and soccer, and experience the love of Jesus Christ. I will never forget the day where I was driving the bus around to pick up the kids for VBS. And these kids with no shoes and shorts would come along with us and they'd come to VBS and be a part of our community. And we did all we could to support them, to make them feel like they're a part of a socially inclusive community. You see, Jesus says, Dear children, let us not love with words or tongue, but with actions and in truth. For many Christians, they think that all this world needs right now is the prophecies, and they need what this Bible teaches. Yes, they do. But they don't need it rammed down their neck. They need it by a church family being socially inclusive and loving them into a relationship with Jesus Christ. There was a young man in one of my churches who could tell me every prophecy in the Bible. He could tell me every memory verse he could remember. He would wear a suit and tie. But after church finished, he would go home, he would smoke, he would drink, he would abuse his partner. Why? Because he never experienced the love of Jesus Christ. And it wasn't until I sat down with him and he said, Pastor, you've talked about love today, but what is love? This guy had been in the church for 10, 15 years. But he asked me the question then, what is love? And I opened the Bible in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that if you believe in him, you're not perish, but have eternal life. And he finally got it. As he read it and he put his own name into that verse, he looked at me with tears and he said, I've finally got it, Greg. Jesus loves me. And even though I was abused by my father, Jesus loves me. And he's able to look past his hurt, look past his pain and realize the love of Jesus Christ. And when you experience the love of Jesus Christ, it changes you from the inside out. It transforms you from the inside out. When you experience the love of the church community that we had there that loved him no matter what. It transformed him from the inside out. No amount of hurt, no amount of pain, no amount of abuse, whatever it is racially, whatever it is, can separate you from the love of Jesus Christ. And I pray it will never separate you from the love of the church. We are to be a socially inclusive church community. We were given a van. We created a late night street ministry. We were headed out on the streets of Otara. And the very first night we headed out, we had no idea what Jesus had in store. But this woman came walking down the road. And she looked at us and she said, what is some lovely, fine young men doing out here this time of night? And I said, we're here to share the love of Jesus Christ. We're here to share the love of Jesus Christ. Would you like a drink? Oh, that'd be wonderful. That'd be wonderful. And she walked along and she sat down in the gutter. I sat there with her. We waited for the drink. 
And she looked over and she said, so, what's your favourite Bible verse? I'm like, hang on, what? It took me aback. And I said, Proverbs 3, 5 and 6, trust in the Lord with all your hearts. Lean not on your own understanding. And all your ways acknowledge him. And you make your path straight. And I sat there a bit longer and I was like, you know what? I'm going to ask her. If she's asked me this question, she obviously has a bit of an understanding. And so I said, so what's your favourite Bible verse? She reached open to her handbag. It was the size of a Bible. And she pulled a HMS Richard study Bible out of her handbag. Which church has HMS Richard study Bibles? She opened it up to the 23rd Psalm. And she read to me, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in pastures green. He leads me beside still waters. And though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil. For the Lord is by my side. I started to cry and I looked at her and she had tears in her eyes. And she said to me, she said, which church are you from? Turns out that there had been a hard past for her in the church. That the church that she was attending was not socially inclusive. In actual fact, people in that church have been abusive. But by God's grace, that very first night that we took that van out, this woman has come to experience the love of Jesus Christ through the church, being a socially inclusive, loving church community. Stride. Which way are you stepping? Are you striding towards Jesus Christ and striding to love others, or are you stepping back and breaking relationships, hurting one another? The person who walks through today, are you willing to love them? Are you willing to embrace them? Are you willing to journey with them? As a kid, we used to sing, Jesus loves little children, all the children of the world, red and yellow, black and white, all are precious in his sight. But do we really mean that? Do we really live that? Gold Coast Central Church. God has called us to be a church that is spiritually grounded, socially inclusive. It's a value that each of us strives and strives to become. I'll be the first to say here I'm not perfect. We're not perfect. In actual fact, we're the perfectly imperfect church. But I want to challenge us today to be like these balloons. Gather together. And not be like all those balloons. May no one ever, ever be left out like that blue balloon. But may we reach out as Jesus did. And be the hands and feet of Jesus. We are called to be his hands and feet. When we experience his love on the cross, when we are his body of Christ under his grace, we're called to be his feet. And we're called to get these boxes. We're called to tear them down, to step on them, to smash them, to get rid of them and have no boxes any longer, but have relationships, hands united Arms around one another, 
going united as a family of God, heading in the one direction that is looking to him as our Lord and Saviour and ex- expecting the very soon return of Jesus Christ when all this heartache, all this sorrow, all this pain, all this hurt, everything that's happening in today will be finished. And he'll look at us and say, I know you. I love you. And together, we'll spend eternity with him. It's so easy to place people in boxes, drawing lines, creating sides. There's us, and there's them. Those we feel comfortable around, and those we don't. There are those of us with many chapters, and those just starting their own stories. There's the well-to-do, and those doing what they can. There are those we share something with, and those we don't seem to share anything with. Welcome, and thank you for coming today, guys. Today, I'm gonna be conducting an experiment uh, where I'll ask you a series of questions. Now, these questions will be very personal questions, and for us to get a true result, I need you to be completely honest with how you respond. The first question I have is, who in here was the class clown? (laughs) Who is never on time? us, we who have tattoos. We who feel lonely. We who have been bullied. others. We who are madly in love. We who have overcome great adversity. won the championship this year. all of us who are created in the image of God. And as one body, we stand together, united as one under his grace.
I'd like to invite you to stand with us. You can climb out of your box and we can all come together and sing. For we are a part of the family of God. person next to you and say, I'm so glad you're a part of the family of God. Amen. Thank you, everyone, for spending your Sabbath morning with us. Um, thank you to everybody who served here this, today in any um, capacity, whatever capacity. We thank you. May you be blessed. If anybody would like somebody to pray with them or for them, I invite you to please come to our prayer corner. And anybody online, please send us your prayer requests on a message. Um, yeah, have a wonderful day further. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Remember to grab your copy of the Advent book at the info desk on your way out, but only if you plan on using it. Have a lovely day, everyone. Thank you. <laughs>